So for me, the back to school season, like grief, has five stages. One, denial. Two, anger. Three, bargaining. Four, depression. Five, acceptance. I'm hoping that you're at the acceptance stage with me, and if not, these tips will hopefully help you get there eventually. And also a big thank you to Canon for sponsoring today's video. Regardless of which planning method you ultimately choose to use, I highly recommend making your own personal yearbook. I know most schools usually have their own yearbooks at the end of the year that you can buy, but this one is 100% for your eyes only, so you can keep track of your school memories, moments, and thoughts from throughout each academic year and have them all in one place. So for instance, I made a digital one last year for myself and the my thoughts on my classes section helped me end up choosing to change my major. So in this yearbook, I also recommend making a photo memories section where you can capture moments from throughout the year with your friends or at school, as well as a place where you can write down your top memories. So a great tool that can help you out with this is the Canon Ivy mini photo printer. For the photos I'll be using in my yearbook spread in my bullet journal, I'll just get the photos from my phone by using the Canon Ivy Mini Printer app. Since we're usually on the go at school, chances are any photos we take will ultimately be done on our phones, so it is super convenient that you can just sync your phone to the printer via the app and print the photos directly from your phone, and you can even bring the printer with you to school in your backpack for school projects. The app allows you to edit each photo before printing it out and add cute filters, stickers, borders, etc. And it even has color adjustment options. And most importantly, for any creative journalists out there or scrapbookers, this is for you. The photo comes out with a sticker on the back, so you don't have to deal with pesky glue or sticky tape that usually is really hard to use anyways on photo paper. So you just peel off the back to reveal the sticky underside, press it onto the desired location, and ta-da! Tis perfectly stuck in place and smooth. Also, no ink is required for the printer, which is really great. And you can also also use their collage option to combine multiple photos into one, which I'll probably be using for the monthly photos going forward. And if you guys want to check out this printer yourselves, be sure to click the link in my description box. And again, a big thank you to Canon for sponsoring this video. So once I know which classes I'm taking and who's teaching them, I always look up the professors to see if they have a website because that can be really helpful and also if there are any reviews about the professors. Of course, always take them with a grain of salt, but in general, there's usually some useful advice or information about the professor's class or teaching style, and I write those down in advance. Even better, if you have a friend or upperclassman who you know already took the class before, ask them for any advice about the format of the class or difficulty, and see if you can get any useful tips out of them. <gasps> I'm going to be a mom? So once I get the syllabus, I see what general topics are covered as well as the overall structure of the class. This also might tell you whether or not you'll need some of your old notes, and if so, be sure to get them out and have them easily accessible. So I've come to learn the hard way that schools generally change or reset their passwords in the summer. And just public service announcement, if you have a university ID that you have to know in order to call customer service or to get your password reset, memorize it because I didn't and bad things happened. So be sure to make a page or note in your phone, which you can lock, by the way, you can lock your notes, which I did not know for a long time, but just somewhere where you can easily check with 
all your school website passwords, ID numbers, and other important information. So I'm going to talk about this topic in more detail in one of my upcoming back to school videos about procrastination, which will be linked here once the video is up on my channel, but I've recently realized that effort-based goals rather than result-based goals pretty much eliminated my tendency to procrastinate. So a way to do that is to take a look at the past year of your life and in each general category, pick your two top most priorities and then try to make the habits or the goals a little bit harder or more than what you've been doing the past year. So now onto my favorite part of back to school, which is of course shopping. And before I go shopping, I usually check which stationery doesn't work anymore. And I'll even often wait until the first week of school when I get the required school supplies list because one class usually requires grid paper, another line paper, another five ring binders, three ring binders, etc. So it's honestly just easier to go once I have the full required list. And also, if you're ordering online, be sure to check the dates of arrival and order things far in advance if you need to, because some websites can take up to one to two months for things to arrive, if not longer, and you don't wanna be left without supplies until then. So next, I get apps I need for school and I clear my devices so I have enough storage for them, and I just make them more organized for the new school year. And also at this time, if you feel like you need a tutor, be sure to check out your university or school's website because chances are they might offer some free tutoring options, which can be really great. So for textbooks, I also recommend waiting until you find out whether they're required or not. Also, I don't automatically buy them from my university. I first check other online resources to see if I can find them there for cheaper in an online version since it can also save you money. Also, if you're in a school that has standardized tests at the end of the year, I would always buy the test prep books at the beginning of the year as well, instead of waiting until the end of the year, since a lot of the time, those prep books are actually better at explaining things than the school textbook and can actually really help with you understanding the concepts. So my first study strategy is largely based on the syllabus. I first check for any extra credit opportunities and thoroughly check them out because sometimes they're time sensitive. So I make sure that I do those no matter what at the beginning if I can of the semester so that I have some cushion for exams. I also prioritize my time based on what's most heavily weighed. So if there's a big project that's worth like 20% of the grade, I will spend way more time on that than discussion posts that are worth only 1% of the grade. And in general, 
my main strategy throughout the semester is to try to keep my grades on each assignment as high as humanly possible in order to give myself more room to breathe on the final exam or projects. My goal is for me to be able to get like an 80% on the exam and still get an A because my grades on everything else were really high, which reduces the pressure a lot and tests anxiety. And for bonus tips, if you can, visit the campus beforehand and see where all your classes are so you don't get lost and go to the wrong classroom numerous times like I did and sit there on the floor for half an hour before realizing that it's the wrong place. Just, just don't. I hope these tips were helpful. I hope you guys have a great new school year and I'm wishing you all the best and I will see you guys in my next video. Yes! I won! I actually won! Look at that! I won!